And can you explain why it's so challenging in general to mitigate? Okay, so great. Uh, I, I'm glad that you split it. So we do something called Wiser in the City. It's usually we go to either Times Square or we go to, uh, in New York usually, in different spots. And we just interview people on the street, you know, and we ask them security questions. We do cash caps, stuff like that, like fun activity. And whenever, like one of the first questions is like, what is social engineering? You know, this is like basic questions we like to ask. And it always surprises me what people answer. And it actually makes a lot of sense. What they're usually saying is, that's for the uh, average person, social engineering is building social media apps. You know, that's what social engineering is. So first of all, I think it's framed wrong. You know, if people that are not educated about this specific topic think that social engineering is building social media apps, I'm with them. I think, you know, uh, we are sometimes too technical in how we try to word things in, in the cybersecurity space. Basically, it's, it's just the same old con men tricks, you know? It's, it's not more than that. Uh, you're being tricked. Uh, you, it's a scam. It's just a scam. It just happens on digital, right? And the same old techniques. Uh, you, you're being lured into a scam. You're being tricked to think that you have an amazing deal. You're being tricked to think that they're your friend. You're tricked to think that this is somebody official from, you know, a company you work with. It's, it's just the old same thing, just digital. And I think we're just overcomplicating it with trying to, like, make it sound, like, more sophisticated. And I think that's also why a lot of people fail because it's not about, and I'll talk about it in a second a little bit more, but it's not just about... You know, we make it sound like, hey, look at the email address. You know, if there's a spelling mistake, that's, you know, a social engineering attack. And I actually posted about it earlier today. Um, you know, it, it happened to actually, it happened to my wife. And I'm also proud that she didn't fall for it. But she booked, she booked uh, a hotel with her friends. Uh, she hadn't seen them for like over a year. And she booked a hotel through one of those popular, you know, uh, hotel apps like Booking.com and stuff like that. I won't mention exactly which one it is. And what happened, so she put in her credit card. Everything looked fine. Uh, she got a notification. And I think it was about a day before she, uh, um, she was supposed to go to the hotel. She got, from, she got an in-app notification from the app itself from the app itself. She got a notification that there was a problem with her credit card and she needs to pay in order to, uh, you know, to verify the room, basically to get in. So it didn't sound right to her. She called the hotel. Sure enough, this was a scam. And what happened in her case was that the criminals hacked the hotel's account and they used their hotel account to basically send notifications through the app and through email to her. So, you know, it's not a technical thing. You know what? She didn't look at technical aspects. She didn't look at the email address or all. It just didn't make sense, you know? I talk about it so much at home, and that's something that she had that uh, digital scam instance, I call it, right, to figure this out. So I think one of the things we're failing is that we're trying to make it a very, you know, black and white thing, you know, very technical. If you do this and you do this and you do this, you're good. But at the point in time, it's more an emotional thing. You're, you know, your judgment is clouded when you are in that context. Um, so that's just high level. I think from a company point of view, a few things go wrong in general uh, with security awareness, not only specifically uh, social engineering, but it contributes. I think, first of all, security teams sort of look at people like devices, you know, like the attitude they have to fix the problem is very similar to the attitude they have to patch a device or something similar. They think they can fix it, you know, and you can't fix people, right? You can't, like the expectation that I'll do something and I'll put an endpoint security solution. And if, you know, 
it doesn't detect uh, a malware, I'll call the vendor and I'll say that something is bad with their system, you know. When it comes to people, you have to have different type of KPIs, not zero click rates, you know, it's just unrealistic. So I think, you know, it's it's how you go about it. We can talk about it also. How do you basically, what do you, what a security awareness can do, but you can't just like totally uh, um, fix people. That's sort of uh, one thing. Change is something that takes time.